again for one of the final two shows. The first of the final two shows of Speed Street for the year 2022. Uh, thanks for being with us. Hope you're having a great holiday season, getting everything you need uh, done, everything wrapped up, both literally and figuratively. Uh, like I said, we're going to do the show this week. Connor's going to be traveling next week. Uh, and then the week after that, we're going to have a full on Christmas holiday best of uh, the year 22 extravaganza uh, to send us off into 2023 and let uh, me and Connor and Ben, of course, producer Ben, get some rest and enjoy some time with family and friends during the holidays and you as well. We appreciate you, though, as always, for being with us. This is Speed Street brought to you by Dirty Mo Media. I'm Joey Molinero. And, of course, my pal Connor Daly here with us. How you doing, bro? Doing great, man. Uh, a lot going on uh, in the world of IndyCar. I uh, got my physical today. Uh, was at the uh, Med Center at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway getting all of our all of our tests done. Um, it's an interesting time of year. We got uh, very, very important meetings tomorrow. We got the series meetings that are kind of some of our fans know about this. But uh, for those who might not know, um, you know, this time of year, some, usually it was in January, but now they've moved it to December. Um, this time of year, all the drivers kind of come to Indianapolis to get our physicals done. We do, you know, a wide range of, you know, blood, urine, brain, ears, all the things that you need to drive race cars, eyes, obviously as well. Uh, make sure you get all those things, um, you know, checked out. Um, and, uh, and yeah, everyone's kind of in town for this, for these couple days, um, you know, to get those tests done and then to hear from the series tomorrow, you know, we get, you know, we get Jay Fry tomorrow, we get Mark miles, all the, all the head folks, um, you know, tell us kind of the state of the series, what's going on, what we're looking forward to next year. What can be, what, what can we be happy about? Um, so, uh, an important couple of days, kind of like a state of the union, but, um, hopefully filled with more excitement. <laughs> right. Yeah. So for the, this meeting, How's it laid out here? Is it like a, a college lecture hall, a high school lecture hall? You guys are sitting <laughs> at desks, at tables. You're able to interject with questions. Are there people who are more vocal than others? I want to know know it all. Yeah, these meetings are honestly pretty funny. We usually have them at the IndyCar offices, which are obviously across the street from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But um, this year, uh, because they wanted to make more room, we're having it at the, the media center. Um, at the Indianapolis Winter Fever, which is a very vast room. Uh, and so that's interesting for me right out the gate. Who's coming? Who do we have new people? Are there just a bunch of drivers that are coming? I don't know. Maybe there are more IndyCar drivers that we don't know about. But to be fair, you know, there are 27 of us or so full-time guys. So, you know, maybe there's 27 seats that, that they needed. And we we obviously have, you know, the head tech folks there as well, uh, Rocket or Kevin Blanche. Uh, we got a lot of folks in that that meeting room. So, yeah, maybe they just wanted to spread us out a little bit, but uh, that's kind of where it's going to happen. They do provide us some refreshments, which is nice, some coffees, maybe some light breakfast items, um, which is very, very exciting because it is early in the morning. Okay, I not was going to say, not the, the Jimmy John's uh, box, the the number, yeah, nine, no. number seven that we get all <laughs> month of May. Yeah, no Jimmy John's number sevens, um, but, uh, but yeah, we do have apparently some breakfast foods, which is always very nice. I'm going to load up. I'm going to take all the free food I can get from that place. I'm going to drink all their coffee because again, free food is the best food and, uh, and we're going to eat it. So it should be interesting. You, you mentioned the most vocal people potentially. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Who, who would you think might be the most vocal drivers? Like who, who do you think is in there causing a ruckus? Uh, I think that Joseph Newgarden probably is the most vocal I feel like really? um, I feel like Joseph Newgarden is the most vocal in terms of like having questions, maybe being a little bit of a kiss ass. Um, but then also I feel like Will Power is kind of doing some shenanigans. Really the whole Penske team. I feel like you have Joseph. He's kind of being vocal, asking questions, being involved. Will and Scott are kind of being class clowns. You know what I mean? Having little side comments, trying to ruffle feathers a little bit. Um, <laughs> and then I feel like trying to rack here um graham ray hall graham ray hall for sure so you know what's funny having having you said that so joseph not really a a question thrower he he would be like the silent killer right everyone started arguing they've said their things and then the room goes quiet and there's joseph speaking the voice of reason or or he's like a, a powerful echoer of the of the dispute that has just been said so 
Joseph is not like the one to start the row, but he will finish the fight for sure. And he will, he will deliver something because again, he's very smart. He knows more than we do. I'm sure he's, he's done the research. He's a dad now, not only is he reading children's books and studying, uh, you know, A E I O U the ABCs, you know, things like that, but he's, he's knows, knows everything he needs to know about subjects regarding IndyCar. So there's a lot there that he will say, but he will not start it. Uh, Graham Rahal, very smart as well. And he will talk a lot. Graham is a guy, <laughs> obviously a friend of the show, but he will speak a lot and then extend somehow extend you a deal at the D- Ducati dealership after at the end of his statement. You know, he's going to give you a 20% off coupon at his store uh, at the end. So that that's kind of an interesting way to put it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it gets interesting and it's one of my most entertaining moments, I think, of of the of the off season, just because everyone's in a room. You know, you're in you're in a room. Normally, there was no windows in this room, right? Like in the IndyCar offices, no windows. You just get a projector yeah. screen and a you know a PowerPoint presentation and stuff like that. Now, thankfully, we'll have windows. We can look outside. There's a big room. Um, but yeah, there, there's just a lot that's discussed and. Some interesting points are raised and a lot of people honestly get angry because we're passionate about what we do. Right. And sometimes we have questions for our leaders and we're like, Hey, tell us why we got this, you know, tell us why we got that or what's going on here. Um, But realistically it all, I I think for me personally, it all comes from a, you know, from, from basically what we talk about a lot, right. We want to grow this series. We want to make it better. Tell us why we're doing this. Tell us why we're doing that, and we can get behind it. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. I mean, a lot of uh, alphas in there. A lot of people mm. who have opinions. Strong. That's the thing. Opinions. Drivers are all. A lot, all of them are alphas. So everyone, everyone wants to shout, talk. Pato Award usually gets very boisterous. He gets in there. He starts getting real passionate. And we're like, hey, let's have a let's have a mature conversation. We got to come in here like business folks, so we can be respected. Yeah, when I did drivers eating donuts this past May, Pato was very boisterous. He was very, very not afraid to voice his opinions, both good and bad. So it's one to look out for for sure. Uh, I, I'm sure something a, a big item that'll be on the table that uh, broke earlier this week and has kind of been kind of getting dragged a little bit on Twitter is the news about the the uh, engine switch in 2024. Correct? Run run me through this. Give me the driver side of it. Give me why people are upset about it. The layman's terms for folks like myself as well. Let's get into this. Yeah. So basically, what what it is is, you know, in, in our future, we we're, there's there's got to be a hybrid system, right? To attract more manufacturers, you've got to have some sort of electronic um integration some sort of an electrical good for the environment good for everyone you know green shirts all that stuff type thing um which is important right we want to make sure that the sustainability side of the series is respectable we um you know we're doing good things for the planet or as good of things as we can um and to attract more oems right to to get competition for chevy and honda and actually to keep chevy and honda involved we need to have these things. Um, and and the whole part of what we announced in the last couple of years, too, is that we want to go faster. We want to be, you know, we want to have more power. We want the cars to be maybe lighter as well, which isn't going to happen yet, but we need more power. And so part of this, you know, new engine announcement was bigger engine, you know, faster, more power. Um, but with the world the way it is now and the, and the issue with supply, uh, you know, parts supply, uh, what, what we can actually produce for 27 full-time entries. It's just not, it it just apparently is not possible to do respectively. Um, and, and so right now, basically what we have is a hybrid system that we can integrate into the 2.2 liter engines that we already have. Now, again, I don't think this is a bad thing. There are a lot of people that said, Oh, same old stuff. It's actually not. There's actually a lot of integration that I think Chevy and well that it's it's not that I think it is actually happening but Chevy and Honda are actually working together to integrate this system into the current, you know, 2.2 liter engine. Now, 
there will also still be a great level of competition between the manufacturers to how to best integrate it, right? This will change the drivability. It still will add 100 horsepower. You know what I mean? It still will give us more more juice, and that's what people need, right? So I, I think there is a way to look at this that is still exciting. There is still a change. Adding 100 horsepower to our cars is a lot of power. Like that mm-hmm. still is a lot. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of chat about weight. Uh, you know, that's kind of something that we, obviously we all want a new car. And, and to be honest, when I look at all the IMSA testing that's going on right now, the sports car testing with, I don't know if you've seen much of the, the BMW, the Cadillac, the Acura, the new, the new sports cars look awesome and they are so cool. And they clearly have, you know, a massive amount of hybrid technology that they can use. And I'm a little jealous. I'm not going to lie. And, and there is a bit of a stale side of IndyCar on that front. Our car is still the same. It looks honestly not awesome. And and I wish we could get a new car. But that is is going to take some time. And, and when you think about it, because of how healthy our series is when it comes to an entrance side, right? We have 27 oh. full-time cars this year, right? Yeah, That's yeah. 27 cars Okay, double that. Every car has got a backup car. You're getting over 50 cars that you've got to produce. If you're going to find a new car and new stuff for that car, that's a lot currently. And and think of how hard it is to find a new road car right now. The supply and demand for road cars is sure. is crazy right now. So we got to think of that. Um, when you look at the new sports cars, you look at the BMW and the Porsche and the Acura. That's awesome. They're making four of them. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's right. those manufacturers that are making just a small amount of those cars, um, you know, to race. So it's a very different, you have to, and it's hard to open our minds to this. It really is. Because again, I want to see new fast stuff that looks cool and that shoots flames and that's safe for the environment and all this stuff. It's hard because we have a series that, it, that runs on, you know, a, essentially a spec car. That's the tough part. So you know, d- does that help maybe explain a little bit, I guess, about the engine excitement slash some of the disarray in the in the response to it, maybe, Joey? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I uh, So I, one thing we've talked a lot about on this show, and you have definitely, especially last season, everything is just how you mentioned how it's still, you know, pretty difficult to pass, right? You, you wish that it was more of a thing that you could do. So what, what does this engine allow you to do on that front is it make it more difficult does it make it easier do we know that's i think the exciting part about it we don't know right are they going to integrate the push to pass system in with this electronic hybrid system you know what i mean i I actually don't know much about it what's kind of exciting about the the meeting tomorrow is that we as a group will get a lot more information about it so i i don't know now will i know at our next show you know potentially in uh, in, in, in a couple weeks time. Yeah, I think I will, uh, excuse the siren. I think apparently there's some crime happening outside of my house. Who knows? Um, but downtown um, Indy, man. That's, yeah. Downtown, that's Indy, downtown right? Indy living, you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I think we're going to know tomorrow because Marcus Erickson has done some testing with the hybrid system, uh, already. They've done some track tests at IMS. Um, and Marcus is apparently going to be given some time to speak about how that, 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 that went, and uh, the feeling with the hybrid system uh, integrated into the into the engine now. So so yeah, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that that could come from it, and it does open it up to that competition level, right? How is it going to be integrated at the ovals, right? How is it going to be? You know, how are we going to handle 100 horsepower at Indy, right? At the Indy 500, that's going to be awesome. So uh, there's a lot there that is really cool, and there's a lot of potential that we just don't know about yet. You know. So what else will be on the uh, agenda? What else will be the agenda items for this meeting? Do we know? Do you get it sent to you? Is it set there in your seat when you get there? No, there's no like kind of opening document that we get. It's just, you know, they, they start with the competition side, right? Or maybe maybe the maybe we start with the marketing side, but it's, hey, look, this is from a competition side. Do we like using the red tires in the first practice session? No, no one does. But there is a reason why, you know, IndyCar wanted us to do that. Um, and so I'm sure that will be discussed. That That's a lot of a lot of the drivers have asked questions about that. Are there any new rules, right? Are there any new rules that we're going to be implementing next year? Who knows? Um, you know, is there, 
Is there, and then we, you know, move on to the marketing side, right? From the, from the technical side as well, there's going to be, Hey, here's what we're going to do to the cars. Maybe we're going to reduce the weight here. I, I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, talk about tracks. You know, obviously there's, there's a lot of talk about the repaving of Laguna Seca, Road America, uh, Detroit's entirely new for next year, which I think is more exciting than people give it credit for. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be, a, that's going to be a whole new track essentially that we've got, right? Same market, new track. I think it's exciting. I, I like racing in Detroit. I like, like new street circuits. Um, you know, Detroit is where I had my, you know, my first podium in IndyCar. So there's a lot that I, that I have, you know, ties to there. Um, but yeah, there, there's going to be a lot. And honestly, they have it set for a certain amount of time, but it always goes longer because yeah. we have questions. You know, we, we start getting into our, and the, the tough part about these meetings is sometimes is, we just start going on and on about things that we, that we don't really need to go on and on about, but it just happens because there's not often that we all get together. So, um, so that'll be an interesting, um, you know, schedule, I guess. And, and, and I hope there's a lot of cool things that come from it, but who knows, who knows? Yeah. Well, you have to, I'm sure we'll find out, you know, definitely before our next show on the 21st, but, uh, well, have a full recap then, no doubt. Um, you were talking about marketing and the marketing side. We haven't been able to get to this since our last show, um, I don't think. But the news broke that IndyCar is going a different direction with their director of marketing. Uh, they're opening that up. And for kind of a lot of the reasons that we've talked about on this show over and over again, whether it's the off season or in season, um, is just kind of the lack of notoriety attention that is still – there for IndyCar. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the move? Uh, was it surprising to you? Do you think that they listen to speed street? <laughs> Honestly, man, it, it, I think it's a positive move for the series. I think, you know, all three of us would, would decide that, Hey, it's time to go a new way. It's time to time to get some new thoughts. Um, you know, SJ who was in that position, I, I really did give a, a, a great chance. I was a big fan of SJ when she came in. Uh, into the series because I, I loved her attitude, loved how, how she interacted with us. Um, but there was a lot that I think obviously we need to do better. And, and there was a lot that I think that we can do immediately. Um, and, and, and I, and I, and I will be, you know, I, I will completely, you know, I would be able to tell her this, that I just disagree with a lot that we ended up doing as a series for our marketing. Right. Um, but there's also a lot that I obviously still don't know. And I'm happy to willing, you know, I'm willing to admit that too. I don't know what, what the budgets there are, what, right? I mean, I know we've talked about it, I'm sure, but just off the top, you, you said a lot of things that you disagreed with. Well, I mean, how we run our social media, right? Right out the gate. You know, how, how, how we do our social media stuff, how we promote events, how we, you know, how we haven't been able to get a television series for our racing series, right? Um, and just just th things like that in general. So, you know, a lot of that was, was her department. And, and, and so it's time to go a new direction. And I think the biggest thing, closing one chapter is important, right? And I think everyone will agree. But who do we go with to replace her? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That uh -huh. is the biggest thing. And are we throwing enough money at them to be able to do the job, right? I, I think that is going to be the most important thing. And just the fact that we have done this and we have decided to close that chapter with SJ and move on to the next one, I think is important for us as a series. Do I wish it was done in October? Yes, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? I think it's going to be tough to get things going in a short amount of time because whoever is going to get in that role is going to be like, yikes, there's a lot I got to do. And our season starts in March. So, you know, that that's going to be a challenge, but realistically, I, I, I'm thrilled to, you know, to, to see at least one step being taken towards hopefully improving our marketing decisions and, and, and marketing program, but boy, do we have a long way to go. So uh, there's, there's still things that are happening. Alex Plo was announced as McLaren's F1 reserve driver. Not one mention of that, that from the IndyCar Twitter account. I mean, I'm just like, what is happening here? Uh, you know, we got, we got drivers doing sports car races, Joseph and, and Scott, which is awesome, uh, which that did thankfully get some recognition. Um, but yeah, there, there's still a lot that's happening that we're like, hey, what's going on here, Joey? Am I right? Over under 43 years old for the person who's hired. Oh, wow. Great question. 
Gosh, I hope it's an under. Honestly, I, I think at this point, actually, 43 is an interesting year. I would be okay with 43. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or like well, 45. That's, you know, I wanted to go like 40, but I was like, that, you know, for someone to be a director of marketing for a series, any professional sports series, you got to have some experience on your belt. But then at the same time, in the, I mean, in the same light, brother, we're sitting here talking. It's like, maybe you just say, Hey, who's the hot shot 32 year old that has some revolutionary <laughs> ideas. That's ready to wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. And get this thing going. Higher Liberty media. I don't know. <laughs> like uh, it's, it's something that that's, it's a really interesting question, right? Cause like I would be comfortable with, you know, with Doug Bowles running the marketing. I like, again, he, he, he was, he knows all about marketing, but again, he's, he's president of the speedway. So we got, we got jobs to do there. Right. I think there's, there's a lot of people that, again, we're going to need someone that might understand a little bit of racing already, but then you're like, wait, maybe we don't, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know that there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that, do you try to poach from Formula One? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I, I don't think we can because no one would want to leave <laughs> unless we paid them enough. You know what I mean? Right. So, but, okay. Uh, but that's what, see, now I'm thinking in this, I'm thinking in these terms. I'm thinking of, and like the coaching world, for yeah, example. Yeah. So, you know, let's say in the NFL, right? If you're the offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, that's a pretty damn good job. Yeah, but great if, job. But if the Indianapolis Colts need a head coach and they come and say, we want you to be our head coach and give you the head gig, uh, most people are probably going to take that head gig, you know? So what I want to say is like, <laughs> yeah, if you, you know, even if you're in Formula One and you're, you're the, one of the hot shots, you're shaking hands with Brad Pitt and all that shit, but you're, you're still taking orders from a bunch of other people. But then IndyCar says, hey, I, we've seen some work that you do. We appreciate what's going on here. You, you we'll give you the reins. You would think even then they would be like, "All right, yeah, let's fire this thing up. Let's go." Man, it's just it's such a it's such a tough quandary because, like, I I I would love the idea of getting someone from F one right who understands maybe a little bit of racing, but also like I would love to see like. I don't know, just like I would love to see whoever whoever gets the job that just understands how to take something that has a lot of potential and brings it to that next level. And, and I don't know what that is. Honestly, the best story for that right now is F1. Like it truly is. And so, you know, that's the best story of taking something in America that is genuinely unknown and making it a superpower. So again, that's going to be tough. I don't know what the answer to that is, um, but it, 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 it's an important position to fill. It's an important thing to understand where we need to go and, and what we have in our, because again, we're the greatest series that no one knows about, right? Like sadly, that's a tagline, right? There's There's such good racing. There's such... There is not a problem with the product. Our core fans can complain about the product because they know about us, right? Like they know about it, right? But no F1 fans are complaining. New F1 fans are complaining about the racing. But genuinely, the core F1 fans probably have a problem with some of the races sometimes. You know what I mean? Like I am yeah. a core F1 fan. I think the racing still sucks at a lot of places. But but that's because I know it. And I, I, again, this was a story that I could not wait to tell on the podcast. And Joey, this this will be something that you will be attached to because um, there was a Purdue sweatshirt involved, right? Like we understand, hey, there's we, we know about Purdue. We understand that college, right? Um, and I couldn't wait to tell this story to you too. We're, we're sitting there, day of the Big Ten championship game, right? Big excitement, Michigan, Purdue. In Indiana, the home of IndyCar. And I hear this young man speaking to an older gentleman uh, at at, uh, at Coaches, one of our favorite bars downtown in Indianapolis, one of my favorite bars. Tom, the owner, great bar. If you, if you haven't been there in Indianapolis yet, please go there. Great place. That's where we watch sports. Um, 
And there's this young man speaking about Formula One to this to this gentleman. And I'm sitting there with my buddy Deepu, who's a big IndyCar fan. We we love it. We love oh, the Indy 500. Uh-huh. And and there is just it, it's the example to a T about the problem that we are facing as a sport right now. Right? It's oh my gosh. F1 is awesome. And we've got an American driver coming now, too. It's awesome. He's going to drive for Williams. Logan Sargent. So cool. It's going to be great. Man, the series is so exciting right now. It's so cool. I love to watch that. You know, and sometimes, you know, I watch NASCAR sometimes, too. And we're literally over here. I'm I'm look, I'm look. looking at this conversation. And my friend Deepu immediately says to him, he's like, oh, man, come on. What about IndyCar? Like, what about the Indy 500? He's like, Ah, it's just never on. I never know when to watch IndyCar or see IndyCar. It's like we're literally on NBC. It's a channel that actually is more visible than ESPN, technically, right? Like, yeah, it, it's it's a service that is is available everywhere. You ever and heard of so, the Today Show? You ever hear of the Today? Like Saturday it, Night Live. Same but channel. Exactly. The way the phrase was said, it was so, it, it, it was just, it, in my mind, it exploded. I mean, I was like, you just have no idea that we're on television. And that's our biggest problem. You know what I mean? It's our biggest issue. We're on primetime television sometimes on a network and people just don't know. And And, and that was... That was really difficult to hear because it was boom, NASCAR F1, NASCAR F1, hearing it in the background. And we immediately interjected because then Deepu was like, well, he's an IndyCar driver. And he was like, oh, no way. Really? Well, that's cool. And then we were like, do you like the Indy 500? He's like, nah. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is our area. This is literally our demographic. This is our state, right? Like the track is 10 minutes away. Those are the people that we should be least concerned about are the people wearing Purdue and IU sweatshirts that are wearing Butler sweatshirts. The people that are here are the people that we are not worried about. Now, we should be potentially. I don't know. Did you ask this Sigma Chi if he is from <laughs> Indiana or is he from somewhere else? <laughs> Look, I, I actually, the, the funny thing was, it might have seemed like we were upset with him at that initial at that initial conversation point, but I actually told him, I said, Hey man, honestly, I I appreciate that. You know, about Logan Sargent. I appreciate that. You know, about formula one. The thing that I told him, I was like, Hey man, give us a chance sometime. That's all I said. And he's like, Oh yeah, no, I have a lot of friends that do go to the Indy 500 and that, that are, that are fans. And I was like, that's awesome. I said, Hey, just give us a chance. If you don't see us, maybe try to find us. You know what I mean? Because that's all I can say, right? They clearly are watching the hype stuff. Like F1 is awesome. Hey, because it's I saw it on t- a TV show. You know what I mean? But but it was the core reason why we are struggling. I literally saw it with my eyes. I see it. Like we can talk about it because we think that that's the problem. But I literally heard it out of someone's mouth. We have no idea that IndyCar is on television. I mean, that that's the biggest, that's the biggest evidence that I've ever seen. I, it was painted a bright, beautiful picture right in front of me. I mean, does it, does it surprise you hearing that honestly? No, because I, I couldn't wait to tell that story. No, it, it, it doesn't. Um, because even, you know, even in my, close friend group you know guys who are in my wedding uh you know obviously they know about the indy 500 and 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 go to that and the party weekend and everything but even with how my fandom and my involvement in the sport and the series and the media has gotten with it even they it's hard to get them to be like you know i'm like hey let's go somewhere and watch uh, the race at road america you know let's just go <laughs> yeah. to a bar and watch the the the, the race at road america right like and even i have i have a couple of, of really good friends that would be like, hell yeah, man, let's go like ready to go. Other than that, people are like, uh, uh, um, you know, they just, it's just not. And so it is frustrating. You know what I mean? Like I tried to, I, I, I tried to, for your best, you know, for my best group of friends, 
even, you know? So you think about with your best group of friends, if you can't convince them or talk them into it, then how are you going to talk to Sigma Chi Purdue sweatshirt about the Indy 500 or any car, you know? So that does suck. But one thing that I was kind of thinking about, especially with the World Cup going on right now. Yes. Right? Like, it's this. this happens every four years. Every four years, everybody gets involved, right? And everybody's, you know, USA, watching the matches, following it, <laughs> following soccer, right? And everybody's, you know, it, it, it's all great. But then you have the people who are the core group, you know, the people who've been watching the qualifiers last year or two years ago or whatever, who kind of get, you know, their, their panties in a bunch and throw a little hissy fit because, well, where have you guys been? Classic America soccer fans, you know, hey, you, you're here <laughs> yeah. now because they're playing, which is so, pardon my French, fucking annoying to me because it's like, <laughs> well, what do you want? Do you want people to follow and to be a fan of it? Or do you want to bitch about it because they're not staying up at two in the morning and watching them play in the fucking Netherlands? Like, yeah. <laughs> so what my question is, how do you think hardcore fans of IndyCar that have been here for a while Hopefully, when this does break, when this does happen to where the, the, the boom happens, just like it happens for Formula One, how do you think that those folks will react to people who are coming in? Do you think they'll be welcoming? Do you think they'll say, yeah, this is what we've been waiting for? Or do you think they'll pull the <laughs> soccer fan card and be like, oh, well, here, where have you been? Well, all those people can pull that card, but it doesn't matter, frankly, honestly. It's like it's like the core F1 fans that 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 hate the fact that there's a Netflix show. It doesn't matter. And, and no one cares about that because – the series is successful and everything's going better. And honestly, I am that guy, right? Like I don't watch soccer ever, but I love watching Same. the world cup. Right. I'm like, I love cheering for America. Right. I, and I love, I, I enjoyed watching the Netherlands play against, I have no idea who they played, but I enjoyed watching that before the U S played England. Right. Like that, that was cool. Like it, it's because, I like seeing passionate folks cheering for their countries, right? I love watching the Olympics. I don't know anything about whatever it is that I'm watching. I've never thrown a discus thing. I've never thrown a javelin, but I'm going to watch people throw sticks out into the grass because it's America, right? Like I'm cheering for the American javelinist. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't care if I don't watch that sport all the time, but if it's on and if there's someone that I can cheer for that is my country, awesome. Olympics, great, perfect. World Cup, America, awesome. Don't don't like that I watched a tie between America and England, right? Like, I, sadly, we got our faces kicked in by the Netherlands, right? And now I have to tattoo Dutch flags on my arms, you know, at St. Pete because I made a bet about it with my teammate Renus. But still, it you know that that's another story that we can talk about later. And again, I hate to get too deep and serious into this talk as we do sometimes on this podcast. And again, if you hate it, please tell us about it, but we just care about this, you know, this sport, we care about it. I do think if IndyCar does get that boom of excitement, some of our core fans will hate it, but it doesn't matter because you know that people, more people now know about IndyCar racing. So you know, it's Good it's point. right out there in front of us. There are young people talking about racing at a bar. That is a huge step forward that we need, but we just need them to be aware of IndyCar too. It is truly possible to see young people talking about racing at bars, and I think that is important. So, again... Part of that was positive to see, right? But we just need to be able to soak those people's minds with the fact that IndyCar also exists. So again, I, I, I think that was an interesting thing to be able to, to, to witness personally um, and, and to see happen. Um, but yeah, we got it. We got to take our series to that next level and we got to get it there. So as we've talked about, we never want to get negative yeah. because again, we know it's hard, 
But again, these are things that we have to present. These are hopefully things that people that if, that are new that listen to this podcast that might not be IndyCar fans, you know, we want to make them aware of IndyCar. So, hey, that's what we're here for, right? Happiness in IndyCar. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt. Nobody wants it more than us. Yeah. So I mean Exactly. You said it. It's just it's just it's just passion, you know. That's all it is. So Yeah. Um and it is a sim you know, I I, I like I said it it I've ran into some but it's it's little by little. Like I, I I've chipped away, you know. I got my buddies who go to Nashville with me for that race and like they're kind of asking about it. They want to go to practice, you know what I mean? Like they're betting on IndyCar, you know, they're texting me on Sunday morning of the race, hey, who do you like here? Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, so, I love that. Li- li- Little by little, you know, little by little, you take those those baby steps. Like, what about Bob? You take them and, and, and you roll with them. We do have some new blood. Not not only do we have, uh, you know, an American driver that we talked about, Logan Sargent, going into Formula One, uh, but we have some fresh faces coming into IndyCar for 2023 uh, that were announced over this past week. Should, should yes. you introduce us to them? Yeah, absolutely. We mentioned it, um, you know, in the in the pre-show segment that we we have a little bit before our show uh, that we record. But um, there is a new driver at Ganassi, right? That the, the the eleven car, right? The 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 most coveted seat in our sport. Um, you know, a part of that has been filled, right? Because again, I wasn't sure if this was a you know, a full-time seat, right? We didn't know what was going on, but Marcus Armstrong, who again, I'm not going to lie. I don't know anything about this person, right? I I don't know who Marcus Armstrong is, but I know that he is successful in Formula 2, right? And so that that's great. Fills the seat, takes the most coveted seat in motorsport, in IndyCar, I mean, (laughs) Um, <laughs> takes a seat that I, you know, that all of us would love to have. Um, but just apparently the road and street courses, was I right? I'm not really sure. Ben is our news guy, so I don't really know, but apparently, you know, that seat is now filled. Um, and there will be an oval part to that seat. Ben, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Marcus Armstrong, there are now two Marcuses at Chip Ganassi Racing. So again, congrats to him, right? That that That's cool. I think, hey, we have some new blood in this series. I didn't like that when he tweeted about it, he didn't tag at IndyCar, but that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's it, where we're learning. We are learning. So again, new driver in the series. Very cool. He comes from that F1, you know, feeder system, which is great. And again, I always welcome everyone new, right? I didn't know Roman Grosjean before I met him and interacted with him. And and again, that's a new person in our series. I didn't know Christian Lundergardner Smithenstein version Steens, right? But he is now a friend of mine, and I consider him a great friend. I didn't know Callum Eilat. Great guy, very talented driver that I think a lot of our IndyCar fans hopefully can now enjoy as a talented driver. So again, very cool to be able to welcome these people to our series, this new young driver. Um, So yeah, it's new, it's cool, and here we go, you know? Yeah, potential, potential for new eyeballs, new folks getting introduced to it. You know, like you said, I mean... Marcus Erickson comes from there. Uh, Roman Grosjean, we've seen the influx of Grosjean, you know, jerseys and shirts and and merch and diecasts that everybody wants, you know. So, yeah, I feel like it's good. Uh, again, good exposure to get somebody like that. And uh, yeah, congrats to Marcus. So Marcus yeah. and Marcus, maybe some yeah, <laughs> Marcus and Marcus, uh, you know, content over there at Ganassi that they can they can whip up. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie. I might have seen him at the physical today. He might have been there when I was there, but I'm not sure if it was him because I don't know. So I I, I literally had someone walk out of a door and he we did one of those like nods, like, 
like like a like a sup nod and he was like hey and i just said yo and i kept on walking because i have no idea so i i didn't know it was a yo it was a sup it was a hey and i don't know if that was marcus armstrong because i am not really sure but it looked like him so who knows maybe you stiffed you stiff the new guy <laughs> no i just i didn't know if it was him or not so who knows so that that was that was my questionable interaction of the day, and I don't know if that happened. So this is a funny interaction. If you've ever run into that as a podcast listener, and you might think that you have seen an IndyCar driver at a dinner that you might not have known, that is what just happened to me. I did not know if I saw an IndyCar driver at a physical, but it might have been him. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whenever whenever you get hit with a <laughs> yo, that means yeah. they have no fucking clue who you are. Yeah, I I, 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 and you think you know somebody from high school or college, or maybe they remember you from one night out at the bar, and you're like, "Hey, what's yep. going on?" And they go, "Yo, you're nope." They don't know anything about you. Ne- I hit them with a yo. I hit it's him. like uh, <laughs> when I when I ran into Vince Vaughn at the uh, national oh. championship a couple of years ago. It was literally it was me and him walking in a hallway and Oof. the superdome and i had that go through my mind i was like do i say hey dude i mean he's what is he gonna you know what is he gonna say to me right and so i just shriveled like a little scaredy cat man and i didn't <laughs> say anything at all yeah. so at least i didn't get a yo i just didn't yeah. get anything <laughs> there you go i mean see these things do happen but again they do that that yep. is that is the fresh IndyCar driver news. And again, we welcome people to the to the series and we love it. Please follow this young person that has entered our series because, again, we, we respect it. So, again, that's the new news of our racing series, which is awesome. Um, there's been a lot of things that we have talked about that is, that is now new. Um, so, again, really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, what do you think? We have anything else? Do you want to get into the random mini 500 driver? Yeah, I do think we can. But before that, I wanted to talk about something um, that I think was really cool. That is a racing thing. It's a motor racing thing. And I mentioned it on my Instagram story. Yeah. And it is Travis Pastrana's latest Gymkhana video. And I don't know if you guys have seen this. I don't know if people that listen to this podcast are familiar with the Gymkhana series of videos. Joey, have you seen a Gymkhana video before? It is a Ken Block video. It used to be a Ken Block video. I remember watching the first Gymkhana video when I was in high school in computer class. I watched the first one that was a Ken Block video when he drove his Subaru around in a random it? yard. Jim ah, uh, Connor with it, a G, G Y M K. And so I watched this very first Jim Connor video when I was in computer class with Ken Block. It was the coolest video I had ever seen in my entire life on the internet. And it is now a series. It is now something that is a very popular thing on the YouTubes. And it is it is something that is so cool. So again, I had mentioned it on my Instagram story. And I had mentioned that I wanted to talk about it. So Joey, have you heard of it before? Have you seen it? No, I am. I am. <laughs> uh, I am fairly new to the Kana. So, so. This is funny, right? So because it is an off season, right? So because there is a lot that we don't know about, right? This is something uh-huh. that I think all of our show listeners, all of the people that I think appreciate racing, all of these people I think would appreciate that because it is a very, very popular video series that is awesome, but it is a great friend of our, our show that I hope hopefully, 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 hopefully Travis Pastrana is eventually going to be on our show at some point. But Travis did do this video and I want to encourage all of our folks to watch this video. It's a Jim Connor video that has just been released. Okay, but I, I love mentioned... okay, so... 
Hold up. So, <laughs> Kana, according to the Wikipedias, um, <laughs> Kana is a type of motorsport known as motor Kana in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, it's similar to autocross. Jim Kana events are time and or speed events. These can feature obstacles such as cones, tires, and barrels. The driver must maneuver through a predetermined track, performing many different driving techniques. What separates Jim Kana from traditional autocross events is that Jim Kana requires drivers to perform reversals, 180 degree spins, 360 spins, <laughs> parking boxes, figure eights. Drifting is also encouraged where helpful or necessary. I'm in. I'm sold. Sounds there you great. go. <clears throat> exactly. Sounds like Mario what? Kart in the real world. <laughs> exactly. Essentially, it is an awesome series of videos. If you haven't seen them, you need to. But quickly to get into this, because if you follow me on Instagram, well, you probably do because you listen to this show. So again, <laughs> very cool. And I said I wanted to mention this, but Travis Pastrana, right? He had done this video. There are a lot of really... Honestly, this is this might have been one of the coolest videos I have ever seen in my life. And honestly, I think it went very viral immediately when it was released because it was, because it was very trendy. And again, this is something that I hope happens to IndyCar because it gets very trendy. But my very favorite part is when Travis was recording parts of this video he had done something dangerous and he ended up in the hospital again because he jumped out of a building for this video as part of this video and ended up in the hospital and so at the time when we did not know this video existed we i had got a text from travis that he was in the hospital and it was a video of him smiling that he was alive, which is awesome, right? Because that's great. And so Travis had sent me a video that he had jumped out of a building and landed badly and broke some stuff and ended up in the hospital. And honestly, it was the funniest video that I had ever seen because Travis was smiling and said, hey, haha, still alive. And he did not die, which is awesome. And so, and again, we did not, not know that this was for this video, Jim Gymkhana, and it was hilarious. So my favorite part of this video was apparently this was the eventually what happened to Travis not dying, sending me a video from a hospital because so like Pulp Fiction. It, you, of you, this video. You, you saw, it was like Pulp Fiction. You saw the <laughs> end at the beginning. Exactly. And then you got back. So to this the is what happened. Travis not dying. And it was awesome. So it was again, Travis didn't die doing this video. And again, I reckon I I I think you should watch this video because it's freaking awesome. It's hilarious, and that is what I mentioned on my Instagram story. So if you appreciate racing, if you appreciate motorsport, you will enjoy this video. And again, that is what happens in our off season, and it was awesome. Always love when people go to the extreme for a bit. My wife hates it. She's always like, <laughs> you got to, you just, you, and I'm like, it's for the bit. She's like, not everything has to go that far. And I, so for him to full on almost die, <laughs> jump out of a building for the video, for the bit, hats off to you, man. Salute. It, it's just awesome. So that was a story that I had alluded to that I said that I would tell on the Speed Street podcast, which is our show. So again, awesome stuff. And now I believe. Joey, we can get to an incredible segment. Okay. Well, what do we got this week? The random Indy 500 driver of the week. So randomly for our random Indy 500 driver of the week, I have chosen someone that I do not know of. And again, this is why we do this part of the show. So the 1973 Indianapolis 500 um, and we do this because we don't know this person, Graham McRae. Graham McRae, 
not an American person. Graham McRae finished 16th in the 1973 Indianapolis 500. And Graham McRae was someone that I did not know, someone that potentially I might it, my, I might learn something about from New Zealand. So Graham McRae is someone from New Zealand, someone who was a racing driver. And obviously we know New Zealanders are very fast because we have Scott McLaughlin. We have Scott Dixon. We have very fast people. And I also believe that our new Marcus Armstrong that is now in IndyCar is also a New Zealander, which is very cool. So Awesome. So Graham McRae is a IndyCar driver who is now that we know about um, from New Zealand, has achieved considerable success apparently in Formula 5000 racing. So again, very cool, uh, born in New Zealand and raced in the race and apparently has only done one Indy 500. That's it. So yep. again, awesome. One Indy 500, someone that we did not know about. And that is our, that is why we do this segment. So very cool. Yep. Finished 16th in the 1973 Indy 500, driving the number 60 car. Uh, <laughs> awesome. He started 13th and uh, his qualifying average was 192 miles per hour. Awesome. So that is Aaron. why we do this segment, because I didn't know who this person is. He did one Indy 500. So awesome. Very cool. And now he's into the lore forever. That's great. Um, <laughs> all right, man. You are traveling overseas, right? Yeah, yeah. So I am headed to Ireland um, very soon. Outstanding. Uh, on Friday. So very cool. So we will not be doing a show next week. Yes. Because correct. of that. Correct. We'll have next week off. How long? So you're there for the whole week with family? Yeah, there for a week. Uh, very excited about it. Uh, heading over there to see some family. Heading over there with my lady. And uh, it's going to be awesome. Going to be a very, very exciting trip. And can't wait to see my family. So very excited to get and, over there. Very excited to take a vacation. Uh, yeah, send a lot of uh, Snapchats or videos to us or, or photos in just a bunch of Irish pubs because I always <laughs> want to go over to Ireland and just you know sit around in a pub all day and, and drink Irish beer with Irish folks. So I'm very jealous. It sounds like a lot of fun. Gonna be awesome and excited to talk about it upon return. So very excited about it and very excited about this trip. Very excited about this. And we will see you guys at some point again. Yeah. 21st, we'll have our Christmas extravaganza. Again, that'll be our last show for 2022. And then we'll head into 2023. And then before you know, once we're back from that, I mean, we got less than two months almost uh, for the IndyCar season starting in 2023 down there in St. Pete. Um, one which I will be in attendance for, which I'm very, very excited about. I don't know if I told you that or not. Going down Love there for it. that, then going to Disney World after with the fam. Anyways, no big deal. Um, yeah, so this has been Speed Street. Follow us at Speed Street Pod, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't forget to tell some friends, racing friends, send us the show, listen to the show, give us a follow, give us a subscribe, give us a review. We love you guys. We appreciate you. And we won't talk to you next week. We'll talk to you two weeks from now for the Christmas extravaganza on Speed Street. Speed Street.